I'm now going to install this front plate uh, my harmonic bouncer. The reason I want to do that is I want to make sure that the zero on the balancer matches zero on my indicator. If not, we can describe any marking here. And uh, this piston is still top to the center from the last measurement we took. All right, got the balancer on. I drew that on with a threaded rod and then sent the bolt in. You don't want to beat that on because then you'll be beating against your thrust bearing. And so I don't know if you can see this or not, but the zero was actually off on this. So I, uh, I cut a line in this indicator and highlighted it. And that's actually only temporary to know where that's at on those bottom four bolts of this uh, timing chain cover because that's where the engine mounts in the boat. And I may even go ahead and use this indicator. Looks a little more adjustable than the one that's on there. Here are the cylinder heads I'm going to be using. It was a 1970 head uh, E casting. Had these done in 04. Um, you can see how much the, uh, the rough casting actually rusted. It was in a plastic bag. I uh, went through all these ports, opened them up a little bit, took all the rough edges out, uh, dovetailed the uh, guide supports, and polished them. Also polished all the chambers, had it surfaced, had a valve job done. And when I did the chambers, I tried to open it up around the valves so it could flow a little bit better. And of course the intakes were all done. That there is a zinc plug and what that does is you can fill it in and actually pretty much match these two exhaust ports. You don't really want to have an exhaust crossover right there. Speaking of all that, this is what they call a Siamese port. If you're going to be running a header, you want to have this recess brazed in. Uh, the manifolds I'm going to run are actually uh, one big port here, so I didn't bother doing that at the time. And these springs are all matched with the cam that's in there. And you can't use a stock retainer, you have to have a retainer for that spring and the cred keeper. Taking a look at this valve job that was done, if you put a straight edge across the tips of all the val valves, you can see that they're not all at the installed height. This is kind of a problem with the rocker um, pedestals, the stock setup that you get with these, because you end up got to, you have to shim them to get them all the same. They're all actually at the correct height. And so I'm gonna go with the adjustable valve train on, on this. Mondello sells a valve uh, installation height tool that you can give your machinist if he does your valve job. And unfortunately, a side effect of that is all these combustion chambers aren't gonna be exactly the same. They're close, and we're gonna do a sample CC on this um, for our compression calculation. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, we leveled this head and stuck a piece of uh, lucite over the top. Using a graduated cylinder and a burette, we checked the volume of one of the combustion chambers. And this originally was an 80cc combustion chamber, it had this head uh, surfaced, and with the porting, it's coming out at 85. We'll go ahead and check the rest of them now. I'm going to go ahead and put some checking springs in. This way it's pretty easy to check uh, for piston the valve clearance and uh, you can take a, a look at the way the, uh, the rock arm is going to ride on the valve tip. To do that, I just use a tool like this to compress it. Enough to get the keepers out.
You can see we've screwed in the ERP stud kit, cleaned the deck surface, we've cleaned the surface on the cylinder head, and now we're ready to install our gasket and cylinder head. Here's my Felpro Marine gasket, part number 1155, and the final figure we need to com computer compression is uh, the area inside here, which is compressed is 9.2 cc's, and this gasket has a compressed thickness of 39 thousandths. And we'll do those calculations in a bit. Putting this gasket in dry. We have the threads on the ARP stud lubed, the washers lubed on both sides, and the base of the nuts are lubed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, step torque these heads down in sequence in three steps. As you can see, looking down the intake port, there has been relieving of the valve guides so that anything will increase flow and cleaning up the ports will just relieve any kind of obstructions around the bowl area underneath the intake was cleaned up. And we can go to the exhaust side. On the exhaust side, you can see it was cleaned up. And anything to help exhaust flow get out is going to increase performance. There used to be an EGR bump that really was an obstruction right here, and that was all removed. On the heat crossovers. This area right here was totally filled between the two ports on the inside. And that just lets heat go up into the intake manifold for warming up the carburetor in cold climates. But then it just really fouls up the four inner cylinders for exhaust scavenging. And since we're going to have the exhaust manifolds on for a boat. I don't know how much that will come into play, but at least not heating up the intake manifold will be a definite improvement.